Well, what is my project today? I'm down here getting ready to paint. I've already caulked. I used my caulking and I caulked around this window. I had it all nicely scraped out and cleaned from before. And I've got that all caulked now, ready to be painted, you know, cut in and stuff. And I also caulked in this window here. Nice thin little bead up there along the edge and along the top and the inside corners if if the inside wall corners had slight little crack or indentations i went ahead and caulked those to make them look all nice and straight and uh and then man i had to caulk all kinds of stuff inside inside this little goodie uh, they didn't even um, when they sheetrock they didn't even get back in here for some reason and they didn't finish the the wall but this is going to be kind of like a kind of like a little pantry area for the for the uh, kitchen so we're going to have some food items in there and stuff and i didn't want ants getting in there from you know coming in from underneath the house or something and then coming in through the cracks and so i caulked all the sides all the way up to the ceiling on both sides and uh i've been doing all kinds of stuff caulking and, and stuff and where, where the pedestal sink is going where the um, the the wall outlet is there's a big crack all the way around that you know a big hole it's like it's like doesn't anybody take pride in the work anymore 15 years ago they just left it um, you know the sheet rockers probably thought oh uh, we're not gonna tape that we're just gonna leave that and we'll let the painters um, fix it and then the painters came and they thought well we're not going to do it because the trim cap on uh, the drain line is going to fit over that and so we're not going to caulk it so they didn't but now I caulked it and uh, I'm all ready now to do some painting and see see here's my here's my craft paper over the floor and I just cut it and notched it and kind of fit it up in there because all I'm doing is the walls right now I'm not I'm not concerning myself you, you know all this wall cavity and the, the shelf and uh, the bottom the bottom of each shelf the top the side trim up in here and stuff so I'm just using a crummy old paint roller and it's just a six inch and this thing used to be a three quarter inch nap roller and it's about had its days hasn't it but I'm using that because that's all I need for in there, it'll be fine. And then after everything dries, I'm just gonna use my cut-in throwaway paintbrush. That's it. That's all I'm gonna use to do all the, all the inside corners up underneath here, up underneath here, the shelf, the sides, you know, the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. And that's it, and, and my little throwaway uh, pants. My plastic insert, I got a plastic insert in here, see? And uh, I just pour some paint in there. You don't have to be a professional painter to do this, come on. You can start doing your own things. And, and uh, this is an eggshell finish, and it's the same stuff that I got on the walls. And then I'm, I'm gonna do my trick. I'm gonna, I'm, after I do the eggshell, one coat on top of these shelves, uh, you know, uh, then after everything's dry, after I cut in everything, I'm going to go ahead and paint the top of this and this and this edge with um, semi-gloss just to give it some more durability and stuff so that we can wipe those shelves off if we spill anything on it, get syrup on there, or who knows, something, something breaks inside there, we can wipe it all down and that's it. And so. I'm just using my craft paper. This was a piece of craft paper I had uh, down where the washer and dryer was. And I was careful to pull it up and I just folded the masking tape back around the edges. And that's, that actually strengthened this little piece up. And I can use that for all kinds of, all kinds of things and slide it around here on the floor and stuff. And that's it. If I get, if I get a drip of paint on this, vinyl flooring I can just wipe it up with with my sponge of course I've got my my uh, my container of water here my sponge here all on the ready and you know when I get when I get ready to do this area here yes I'm gonna have to put some craft paper 
on the floor, you know, a few sheets and, and stuff. I don't want, I don't want uh, to drip and start dripping everywhere. And it doesn't really take very long. And the craft paper, if you haven't been with me, it comes in, oh, I don't know, 200 foot rolls, 250 foot rolls. I, I forget how long, how long it is. It's this resin paper right here. See, look, look at that. That's only $13 for a whole roll of that. And uh, I, I'm going to use this later. This is heavy duty, like cardboard type material. And that's, that's really 100 foot long. And that was like th $30, $33 for that. But uh, I'm not going to use that for paint drops. I'm just going to use my uh, craft paper. It works fine. And that other stuff uh, I'm going to lay out through here um, eventually in a few months I'm going to take this countertop out of here and this is a, uh, a tile uh, countertop from 15 years ago that's how they did their countertops they got a piece of plywood here over the top of the cabinet see here right here all the way across there and then they got a layer of concrete and they probably got chicken wire in there somewhere I, I think I, I might, well, it's probably in there somewhere. And then they put thin set on there, and then they put the tile. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to rip that up. And when I do, then I'm going to put that cardboard stuff down here, down on this floor, and um, protect the floor. Because when this stuff, when this stuff shatters, it's almost like glass shards. I don't want to get that on the floor, obviously. I, I don't want to just use craft paper because if I get this stuff on the floor, if I walk on it and slip and slide on it, I, I could put a big scratch in the nice new floor. I don't want that. So I'm going to use that other heavy duty cardboard type material. And I'm going to, I'm going to run it along here and through here and across in there. And then I'll have to put a plastic barricade up, you know, all the way around here. Yeah. Too bad we didn't uh, get a chance to do it earlier, but hey, the countertop was gonna take uh, five weeks to order, and we we're gonna be moving in here in a couple weeks, and initially we were thinking about redoing the entire uh, kitchen area, take all the cabinets out and stuff, and, and that was gonna be a couple months, and, and you know, as it is, hey, the new flooring is down, the carpet's going in in a couple days, and uh, we're going to be moved in here um, with no stove. I'm going to leave the stove out because we're getting new appliances. And no sense putting in new appliances until I rip out the, the countertops and stuff, right? So I took the dishwasher out. I'm gonna, we're going to leave the dishwasher out. We don't need that. I can wash dishes in the sink, no problem. I do that all the time anyways. It's just the two of us. And... Um, it's easy to let them dry and put away. So I very seldom use the dishwasher anyway, so that's, that's no sweat off my bones. And, and the uh, stove, hey, we'll just have to cook with the microwave. We're leaving that up there. That's gonna be, that's gonna be uh, replaced, uh, but we're gonna leave it up there so that we can use it for now. Same thing with the, with the refrigerator. We're getting a new refrigerator, but we're gonna keep this one for right now. And that's it. That's all we need for, for uh, it's, it's probably going to be, oh, I don't know, um, two months from now, I'm guessing, by the t before uh, the new countertop comes in. And so I've, I'm going to have to rip this out maybe in a month and a half from now. We'll see. I, I've got to order a new sink because it's going to be an under counter sink and, and all that kind of stuff. But that, that's what that cardboard stuff, that's what I'm going to use that cardboard stuff for. But, but, for, but for painting and stuff, if you got hardwood floors, man, craft paper is the way to go. And, uh, you know, if, if I was doing that over carpet with pad, then I was, then I was gonna sweat it. Because I thought we were gonna uh, keep the old carpet and stuff, and I was gonna end up having to paint everything up there over the carpet. That was gonna be a nightmare and a half. And uh, I would have used craft paper like this and ran it up against the wall. And, uh, it would have been very difficult. I'd put some shelf uh, 
slats over the top of the craft paper to give it more stability and run the pieces wider and then slide my my paint tray along or my five gallon bucket along. I, I could have done it, but it would have been tricky, let me tell you. Okay, so hey, that's all, that's all I'm doing. I'm just concentrating on one area. I, I, got, I got the rest of today and uh, two more days before the carpet guys come back. And the carpet guys are gonna go up upstairs. I, I, I only have a couple little things up there to do. What, what was it? I missed, I missed something. Crack me up. The other day I was, I was, I was looking around and uh, I thought, how in the heck did I miss that? Um, this little, this little closet area. Look, I, I missed cutting in the wall uh, along here from the, from the top of the door frame on down next to the light switch and then all the way down just, just to that. I got everything else in the room. I got everything else in the, in the, uh, guest room in this closet except that one edge i don't know how that happened but um you know i'll 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 uh, get that when i have my cut-in brush out when i'm doing some cut-in stuff downstairs and see i did this i did this the other day using that that same little paint tray that same little uh throwaway paint brush to do the cut-in and that same little uh mini roller and it turned out, this, this little area turned out really nice. Okay, the only thing I still have to do is the semi-gloss paint um, on top of the shelf and on these edges. And uh, I just, I just wanna do that just because I have the paint and stuff. And of course, I'm, I wanna do that before the carpet gets in. And, and then I, I may do some, I may do some, a little bit of touch up I noticed there was one little spot. I've got to get my, my flat ceiling paint out, or actually not my flat ceiling paint, my white semi-gloss paint. See there, I, I tagged this, the ceiling right there with my, with my paint. I'm not sure exactly how I did that, but I did. And um, I'm gonna to have to get my white semi-gloss paint out because I ended up painting this closet ceiling semi-gloss i always like to do that in in closets because then when you have the light on it kind of reflects and gives you a little bit extra light uh in your closet area in case you're trying to find something in particular in between your 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 clothes and your hangers and all that kind of stuff uh, eggshell finish on the walls okay and so i've got to i've got to do that oh this door this little trap door that goes up into the uh the the attic walking type attic area up there and I've got some storage up there too. I need to uh, paint this this door and uh, I'll, I'll probably, I'm not even gonna mess with that today. I'll, I'll probably do that tomorrow. And so, you know, there's, there's a couple other little knick-knack things up here that uh, I'll probably end up doing. Not very much, but I wanna get that stuff all taken care of tomorrow and then uh, I'll be concentrating on doing everything downstairs, the, all the cut in and stuff. Remember this transition from the, uh, the wall coming down from the, from the uh, here, let's, let's show you this again, down the stairs. See there and across there, I've got a transition somewhere and there's a bullnose corner here. So you've got to make a decision where to, where to do that and there's this one here. See, this one's, this one's like a 45 degree. This is a 90 degree. And I've already made the determination. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go three quarters up from the, from the bottom up. And that's where, the, that's where the gray's gonna stop. And then I'm gonna continue that line. So then the gray uh, is actually gonna, gonna finish about there. This little bit's gonna stay white. This little bit's gonna stay white. And I decided that because when I'm down here, initially I was thinking maybe taking the gray, usually you split, you split the bullnose trim, but I don't wanna do that because if you're standing out here or right, right about here, you, you'll see that um, gray wrapped around the ceiling. I don't wanna see that. When I'm, when I'm standing out here, all I wanna see 
is that nice white crisp ceiling going up the stairs. Okay, so I gotta do I gotta do that too. I I got some masking tape and I'll measure that and run some masking tape and I'll I'll, I'll put the uh, gray there and then I know uh, I'll I'll have to cut that in again and I might have to get the white out too because when you're going over spray texture knockdown, um, there you're only gonna hit so straight of a line um, when you pull the masking tape up and you'll see little nodules that you that you're gonna have to be really careful and cut in with a paintbrush. You'll see if you, if you ever do that. So, so uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just kind of taking my time today. I'm just doing one little thing at a time and my next little project is this for those shelves. And then eventually, probably tomorrow, I'll put craft paper down in here and then I've got to get, I've got a, a another uh, six inch mini roller that I use for the ceilings with a different nap uh, roller cover. It's a three quarter inch and, and it's worn down a little bit, but not too bad. It's still got half inch uh, nap on there probably, or a little bit more. And then I'll, I'll do the, uh, the top of that soffit and then the top edge of the soffit ceiling and that section going up to, the, to this main ceiling and then the front of the soffit and the underneath side of the soffit. Yeah. And, and then the tricky part is going to be cutting in uh, the paint um, for, on the ceiling to the scribe mold of the cabinetry. That's going to be tricky and, I'm, and I may have to end up doing that uh, twice. I'm not quite sure yet. I've already cut it in a couple times, you know, because I had to put some primer on there and then I had to put uh, some flat paint. So I've got two coats up there already and I cut it in pretty good, but it takes your breath away and you've got to twist and, and get in all kinds of contorted angles and stuff to make sure to get it up there just right and not hit the, uh, the cabinets and the scribe mold and the top of the doors and all that kind of stuff. But hey, if I do, if I do, I just take my sponge and wipe it off and get that taken care of. And, and you know, so for the next few days, I'm going to be working down here. I've got to cut in the ceiling, you know, the wall. See how the wall is up to the ceiling. I've got to cut that in all the, all the way along. And then I've got to uh, paint those corbels. I'm painting those corbels uh, the same color as the wall. And then I've got to paint the wall down to the top of the base. And actually, I've still, I keep forgetting, I, I've got to paint the baseboard too. Yeah, in, in here, I also, and I've already got it cleaned and sanded and wiped down. Same thing with the door frames. I still have to paint those. I've already got these cleaned, then wiped down, then sanded, then wiped down, caulked. And I had to look at all of them and make sure all of them uh, were nicely caulked and everything. And then now they're ready to be painted. So I've got to paint, paint the door frames and all that. This door I've not even painted yet. And I've got to paint the door frame on this. This goes out into the garage. And at the time when I painted all these other doors, I thought, should I take, should I take this door off? And paint that too and I really didn't want to do that because as a solid core door plus plus it was it, it's keeping all the cold air from the garage coming into the house and once you paint a door you want to let it you, you want to let it set and cure for a couple of days before you put it back up and plus it's it, it's gonna have different hardware on it and it's gonna have different hinges on it and so I've got to I've got to get the hinges and, and stuff so this is gonna be this this door here is going to be one project in itself and probably the same time I do that um, this door here I'm not going to paint this door it's a metal clad door and this is this is some different type of paint it's a uh, because it's over metal you don't want to take just semi gloss uh, uh, latex enamel and put over there because it would peel right off even if you sanded this you'd have to you've got to do it at, a special with special uh, metal type uh, well some paint that will uh, 
go over metal. Okay, but so I'm not going to do that, but I am going to paint the door frame on the front of this. And, and see, this just goes outside. I'm not going to paint the outside, but I am going to take the, uh, this, this trim off and see how, see how it's got the red on there because whoever painted this door once upon a time, they painted it with the door in the closed position and they didn't want to open the door. Look, they just cut it in as best they could. And now you've got this nasty line all the way around your door. You don't want to do that. And then you get a little bit of the red on your weather stripping, you see there? You don't want to do that. You know, that's, that's silly. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up taking this out. I'm gonna get some new stuff. And then when I get ready to paint this, then I'll paint this door trim and the door jam just up to here, this edge, okay? And I'm not gonna touch anything from here out, okay? That's on the exterior, exterior. So the day, the day that I do that, I'm not, I'm not sure if, what, if I'm gonna take the door off the hinges and just prop the door over here and then paint the door jam. I don't know, cause it's kind of cold. We're in the winter and stuff, uh, but it's very, it's difficult to get this painted without getting anything on the door, especially trying to get the paint into this groove. And it's very tedious and time consuming to do that without getting it on the door. It's way easier just to take the door off, take the hinges off, set it over here. And so I don't, I don't even know. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking I, I might, I might just not do anything with this door until the summer. And then I can take the door out, be nice, nice and hot outside. Then I can paint the door jam and the door, the door trim and um, let it, let it dry all, all day long. And then I can gently, carefully uh, plop the door back on here. Okay. I should be able to do that. No problem. So uh, I think that's what I'm going to do on that one. And then, th and then this one here, I'm just going to cut around it for right now. I'm not even going to mess with this. Actually, I will cut in this trim around the edge and then just let the, the paint kind of taper and, and just brush it off. So at least I get this edge uh, painted, you know, before I cut it in. That way, uh, when I paint this later, I'll just paint it from this edge over and this will already be cut in. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so a few things, a few things I've got to do. Here's a, here's a little uh, trap door thing. There's a fire sprinkler system in, the, in each individual condo. And I sanded this and this thing was rubbing down at the end. They always seem to rub. So they're, they're just installed uh, with a couple screws on both sides. I took some screws out and lifted, lifted uh, this side and it lifted the edge of the bottom and now this thing fits nice. It didn't take me that long to do that and I nicely sanded that off. Then I'm going to paint this with the eggshell uh, finish uh, on the wall, from the wall and it will kind of blend in and we'll probably get a, we'll probably get some sort of picture. I'd like to get a picture or something and hang it right there to cover that up. You know what I mean? There's a there's an idea for you. Then then you don't have to see that. Okay? But uh, I better get going. It's getting it's getting late in the afternoon and I got to get this little thing done. Hey, if I can do it, of course you can too. Oh, that's funny. Remember I said I needed some white ceiling flat paint. I wasn't quite sure what it was for. It's for those marks, remember? Up there. Those lines on the on the ceiling from my my little paint roller cover or, or my paint roller frame. And I, I don't have to do that today, mind you. I can do that some other time. So I guess I don't have to worry about that today. But what you what you probably should do after a while is write get a notepad and I I've worked off of 
clipboards forever. And you just start making yourself a list of things to do, things that you still need to do uh, today or, or things that need to be cut in or certain things, or you can, or like I say, you can, you can take some blue masking tape. You just pop a little piece of masking tape up there and that, that will be your reminder. You know what I mean? Okay, I just, I just thought that was funny. I had to give myself a little chuckle. My, my mind is swirling of all the different little things I need to do today with the paint. All right, I'm out for now. Thanks for joining me.